Now, I'm going to finish up our show tonight by talking about that amazing result from the Event Horizon Telescope, or EHT, which is actually a global network of radio telescopes. That's right. These telescopes are scattered across the whole globe, and they're used all at once to take images of, well, outer space. And, and what they did before was take an image of a black hole. As you can see here, go forward here at uh, M87, it's a galaxy 55 million light years away. And they were able to peer down into the center of that. And they were imaged a black hole that weighs 6.2 billion suns or, or solar masses, as we like to say. So if you compacted 6.2 billion of our suns into one little tiny space, that's what you get on the right hand side. And they were able to image the glowing gas that's circulating around that black hole. Now they do this by using a whole bunch of telescopes scattered across the globe, like I said. Now notice, these are more like radio dishes. This uh, wavelength is about a little over one millimeter in size. So it's much longer than even infrared light, but it's not quite as long as true radio waves. Um, radio radiation can be meters long. So these ones, um, they're kind of in between. They're called submillimeter telescopes, although this is really in the millimeter range that they're being operated. And some are on top of Kitt Peak, others are in Hawaii, some are in Spain, as you see there. So they're really scattered throughout the globe. And we can see here locations for many of them. And that South Pole Telescope that Katie showed in that image is an important one because it can keep a continuous view of things as other ones rotate in and out of view. And it's actually important that they do that because that baseline, as we call it, the line between the two telescopes changes as the Earth rotates. You can see the shape of that triangle is changing. And as new telescopes come online or, and are able to view things, you get different what we call baselines. And that's how we increase the resolution of these telescopes. If you just have three telescopes, you'd have really lousy resolution. But by having multiple ones that are rotating around and those baselines are changing, you can get very, very high resolution images out of this uh, array of, of telescopes. Now, the new target, the one they announced, was in our own galaxy, about 26,000 light years away. And it's, it's called Sagittarius A star. Very clever name. Astronomers always come up with things. But it is the massive black hole, about 4 million solar masses, so 4 million suns squeezed down together to make a black hole in the center of our galaxy. Um, Andrea Ghez and Gensler won the Nobel Prize by watching stars orbit around it, around this spot that had nothing there. But now we have a picture of what's there in this millimeter wavelength. Um, so let's take a look here. This is the view from here on Earth. That's our Milky Way. If you've ever been out camping or out in a dark sky, you can see the Milky Way band crossing it. And the center of the Milky Way is right there. Now let's zoom in. Uh, you can see the constellations that are around there, Scorpius, and the teapot of Sagittarius kind of points. The, the, the teapot, the nose of it, points down towards where our black hole is. And we're going to zoom into it here, getting closer and closer, passing some gas clouds as we zoom in further. And we'll continue to go in. And you can see those dark dust clouds that block light as well. And then finally, we end up there. Now, where's the black hole? I don't, I don't see a black hole, but there's lots and lots and lots of stars there. There it is. That's the location. Um, when you use the Hubble Space Telescope, when you use um, other instruments, you can really zoom in and see it. In fact, here's an image of stars. Now, if we move in, here's a Hubble image using uh, WIPIC 3, using the infrared part of the camera that can peer past some of that dust, but we still don't see the black hole there. You could use adaptive optics with Keck to be able to map the stars going around in the very, very center to get very high resolution images. But also, th th there's a lot of high energy gas clouds. It's a very turbulent area. So the light that's coming from the black hole is being moved around and wobbled. So that was one of the, the difficulties in getting this image. You have to stare through all this stuff. So here are the telescopes, or at least some of the ones that are looking at it. It's an artist's rendition of including a bunch of them here. And you can see our, our galaxy there, the bulge of it, and the, the black holes in there. So let's see what the image looked like. And there it is. It looks like a donut. <laughs> it looks a lot like that M87 image. We were a little bit surprised it looked like this because in order to look like a donut here, it had to be pointed somewhat at us. We're not looking at edge on. We are looking at it 
kind of down, down the tube. The gas is going around in a circle. It can only be about 30 degrees off of being flat towards us in order to see it as a complete circle like this. And they're quite confident that this indeed is the right image. They did many different combinations. They did a lot of work to understand this and this, this amazing image is there. Now, some folks will say, why is it so blurry? It looks blurry to me. This is just, you know, a poor image. Can't they put some glasses on it like they did Hubble? Well, let's put it into context. We'll go here and we'll zoom in towards the galactic center. We'll put the moon in the way, though, just to be interesting. So it's not the size of the moon we're imaging. That's easy. It's not the size of craters on the moon. It's not the size of a small crater. It's not the size of boulders on the moon, not the size of small rocks not the size of pebbles, it's, it's the size of a donut. So yes, indeed, if you had a donut on the moon that gave off 1.3 millimeter length radiation, you would be able to see it with this telescope, with the resolution we have. So you might think that's blurry, but in reality, it's an amazing feat to be able to pick up something as small as a donut on the moon. It's really incredible they were able to do it. So I mentioned one of the problems with seeing this was the fact that there's gas and dust in the way and hot gas is making the, the radiation change directions. The other problem is this is a small black hole. The material orbiting it only takes from minutes to hours to make a full circle around it. So as the gas gets close, it gets compressed, it heats up, it glows, but that glowing pattern was constantly changing. So the image that we see is actually more of an average. They had to average things together. They had to combine things over five days of observations in early April 2017 and work with it with supercomputers and really understand what happens to the light as it travels to us and also what was happening as it was orbiting the black hole. Now you can see that emission ring of the glowing material. The black hole's event horizon is smaller than that emission ring. It's actually about two and a half times smaller. And that's the place that if you fell into, you wouldn't come out. And that makes sense why we're able to see that glow around it. Because, well, if it were inside of it, the light couldn't get out. So this material has not fallen in yet. Another thing they noticed was our black hole is being kind of what we call quiescent. It's not gobbling up a lot of that gas. It would be brighter if it were doing that. And it would also have a jet of material it was shooting out if it was eating material currently. So they, they put it on the equivalent of a human being on a diet of eating a grain of rice. And I forget whether it was a month or per year, but our black hole is barely eating any of the gas that's swirling around it. So. Um, more is to, a lot more can be learned from these images, and they're even going to be able to make some movies of this material moving around as they continue to study it. Now let's compare it to the M87 image. M87, like I said, is 55 million light years away. Sagittarius A star is only about 27,000 light years away. M87's black hole weighs 6.2 billion suns. The one in our galaxy is about 4 million suns. So when you do the math, ours in the sky is a little bigger on the sky than the M87 one. M87 would be a small donut. Ours would be a little bit of a bigger donut. And these images represent how big they are compared to each other. And um, the M87 one weighs about 1,600 times more than the one in Sagittarius A star the, in our own galaxy. So it's a much bigger black hole. The material takes a much longer time to go around, which is why they could process that image first. And they managed to get that result out earlier than the Sagittarius A star. It was easier data to work with. So nonetheless, the Event Horizon Telescope comes through again, provides us with concrete proof and an image of our own black hole. Whereas we knew it had to be there. There had to be something there the stars were orbiting. Well, now we know it really is a black hole. It really is glowing and it, it matches a lot of the models. And indeed, meow, you're hearing my cat in the background. So I guess that means it's time for us to wrap up here.